I think there is room for huge cynicism about our elected politicians. I do believe most of them are bought and sold. I believe most of them uh, would, would sell their grandmothers to get into power. Power does an amazing thing to people. So I think it's time to wake up. I think that the New World Order is the giant leviathan arriving. I think the fact that in Britain, where I grew up as a child for many years, I couldn't have conceived as a kid a camera being on every corner. That the public being monitored like they're the bad guys, that's what's happening in America. Cop stops you in a New York subway, you're dressed down. We want to know what's in your briefcase. This is the new America. And what you see in the security lines at airports is that, let's use a word, the, the complete mistrust of the people. You're assumed guilty until, well, you pr prove yourself innocent. That's a police state kind of world, and we're getting anesthetized to it. We're, People are looking at lots and lots of TV programs about police busting down doors, violating the Fourth Amendment, getting used to it. Well, it's protecting us. So you have diminished subjects who are basically very afraid of being manipulated by their fear, and they're a thousand light years from, well, the patriots who fought in the American Revolution for the very freedoms this group is giving up that had such conviction of character and strength and dimension to who they are compared to the sort of postmodern generation that's kicking around that have no reference point. They know, they know not who they are. These are weak people and the the people at the checkpoints know that. They can back you down in a heartbeat. What are you going to do? It's a little like the line, who can make war with the beast from the book of Revelation. Don't want to take it too far now. Don't want to tax you. Oh yeah, I woke up in India. I grew up under an intelligent, liberal, atheistic home. I believed in the pantheistic, monistic worldview to the point of selling everything I owned and going to India. I was under a guru. I would met a lot of the top gurus, if you read my book. It took a lot for me to have a figure ground change, believe me, and believe that rather than a, a cosmic ocean, a, an oceanic mind of being, that there's a a God who's so far above us you cannot imagine. That there is real good and evil. That you're accountable in your life. That you have a soul. But at least having a soul gives you purpose. There was a period in my life I had no purpose. I do now. But I've got to be care careful. Some of the people who have woken up to the matrix of our time have to be very careful about waking people up because they can be taken out. If I want to wake you up and you're yawningly indifferent and you prefer to grab the six pack and watch the next football game, I'm not sure sacrificing my life is worth it. That's why you've got to have a love of the truth and look between the lines and know that I will probably give more talks on YouTube to make sense of disquieting and baffling times that we live in. And to me, one of the scariest things is just seeing the down spiraling of America so quickly. And to me, it's like, well, the, the momentum of this agenda has got a lot of confidence. So let's connect again. Again, this book is available as an e-book on Amazon. It's on Amazon. You can find it in bookstores. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's on Borders. It's in other places. I write carefully. I do write so you can read between the lines. I don't spell it all out. But it has changed what I've seen. What I picked up in some of these sources has absolutely changed my life. Yeah, we have purpose. 
there really is a God. He knows what's coming down. There were warnings of this since Babylon. Fractional reserve banking. Wow, let's do the math. What can you do with fractional reserve banking? Well, there's an example of someone who gave up a loan early in the American Republic and what had been hundreds of dollars is worth tens of millions. Fractional reserve banking. Let's say you now loan money in the billions to countries. Wow, fractional reserve banking, now what it's worth. You've just sold yourself for a mess of pottage. You don't even own your own life if you've given it away. That's a real end run around freedom when you're, you're a pauper. I would say like in Eyes Wide Shut, there are people that are so ruthless and so brilliant and so cunning. They don't give a rip about you because your eyes are wide shut. And some of you may wake up if, well, like in the Great Depression during the, the Dust Bowl era, people are kneeling in the sand, owning nothing. They've lost their houses, their fortunes, they've lost it all. Gee, think they might wake up? No longer the usual distractions. That'll be true with us. Very possible. Probably a good time to wake up. I tried to help. My book doesn't say it all. There are other books out there. But I think I've given a fairly credible defense to what's going on in education, in psychology, obviously in the high world of finance, in entertainment. And there are many parameters to this. An illustration I use is if you just leave a Mensa meeting, and Mensa is by far not the highest group, believe me. They're 98th percentile. If you want to go to Four Sigma, you're dealing with one out of 30,000. If you're dealing with Mensa, it's two out of 100. She, one out of 30,000. Take it up to the Mega Society, you've got one out of a million. There are people out there that are awesomely intelligent. What they don't really like are people who think outside the box who might also be smart. We're in a battle, I believe, for our lives, and I think part of it is the whole information game. And why we don't want to be anesthetized as we hear presidents saying, hey, let's up the national debt. We don't want that to happen. So it's been good talking to you, and I'm sure we're going to have other sessions as time permits. And I think it's time to wake up. I would say you be like Neo in the Matrix who suddenly sees what looked like seamless reality suddenly change to more, more like computer bits. And then he takes a look out and he says, wow, it wasn't what I thought it was. The same is true with they live. Oh gosh, he put on the glasses, wasn't the world that I expected. Same is true with eyes wide shut, where Kubrick says, behold, you're real rulers. And this guy was a cinematic genius. So again, good talking to you. I hope we do this again. Over now.